Welcome to another episode of Unsung Heroes, where we highlight some of our most heroic citizens found in our very own communities. Today, we not only have an unsung hero, but an American hero. It is my honor to introduce Richard Hay. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Wonderful. Great it's to be here. It's such an honor to have you here today. Well, thank you. So can you tell us by, uh, can you start by telling us what is it that you did in the Air Force? Okay. Uh, for starters, my name is Richard uh, Hay, and I'm a uh, retired Air Force major. I spent 20 years in the Air Force between 1967 and 1987. Um, my first assignment out of, out of pilot training was uh, Vietnam, where I flew gunships. Uh, after Vietnam, I flew uh, uh, DC-9 Air Vac from Scott Air Force Base. And then I got an MBA with the Air Force at Penn State. Yeah. Was a management analysis and budget uh, uh, management analysis and, and budget officer uh, in the Armament Development Test Center. And then I went back to flying 141s at uh, McGuire Air Force Base. This is how I came back to New Jersey. And I was fortunate enough to get a job with Pan Am for four years and then United for 12. And I retired in 2004. Nice. Mm -hmm. What out of all those experiences, what would you say is your favorite? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the most lasting and impacted on my life was an emergency bail bailout in Vietnam and in the 119 uh, gunship where I had some uh, altered states of perception. Uh, time stood still, uh, me watching me in body, out of body, and uh, total life recall, and eventually a conscious choice delivered I. And after that, being of an intellectual bent, I went looking for truth as a common thread because that was more real than anything else they had shown Truth, me. what do you mean by truth? What uh, well, <clears throat> truth would be what's, what's the ultimate truth in terms of reality, why are we here, I'll learn it ways of saying is, who am I, why am I here, what's the purpose of life, what's the meaning of life, that kind of thing. And what did you find out? What did I find out? Uh, that's interesting. I, I went looking for this truth as a common thread in everything, mm -hmm. because the truth would be always present. But we, um, when I write haiku, at some point in time I tried to, tried to capture the understanding in words, and one of them might be... Uh, uh, Ever-present God seeks absent-minded man to give him the kingdom. In mm. other words, we're sort of ignoring the truth that's always here and always present because we're sort of wrapped up in our What heads. is that truth that you speak of? Um, most people would call it God. Those that uh, don't call it God, you'll hear other terms. They, the intelligence of the universe, the thing that uh, heals my, my cuts and uh, beats my heart. That's certainly a lot smarter than my forebrain which seems to think it's in charge. Mm. It's almost like your forebrain is a calculator or the keyboard that tries to compute mm -hmm. when what it needs to do is ask questions and be still and wait for a response to them and so forth. But uh, after 10 years on that path, I, it's sort of like they're all, for me anyway, I found uh, they were all saying the same thing, seen from different perspectives. Who's they? Uh, the religions, the philosophers, okay. the uh, sage, saints and sages of all, all ages. One way you might look at it is the truth is like a mountain. Mm -hmm. Seen from one side, it looks one way. From another side, it looks another way. And we as human beings tend to take our per particular perspective as the truth. Uh, the right relationship to reality uh, would be another way to say it. And then we take pictures of our ideas and then we fight with each other over that as opposed to, well, maybe what you're seeing is true as well. Can we find some common ground? And there's a thing called a marriage uh, encounter that used to take interpenetrating rings. Hmm. And if you work on the common ground in the middle, you see you're both circles. 
If you work on the half moons on the outside, you come apart and you see you're separate. So oh, forth. wow. Now, did this inspire you to write your book? You said you wrote a book? Uh, yeah. The, uh, after 10 years on the search, I had another epiphany. I was reading the Bible and sort of banging my head against the Bible. I don't get this. I don't get this. And I said, God, show me the truth so I can share it with others. And I had this epiphany where it's sort of like you get shown a very large picture, and then you come back to this level, and you, it's like trying to put a thousand pounds in a one pound mental bag. You can you can elaborate on that epiphany? Um, it was, um, I've been doing, that's in the book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is 40 years worth of trying to uh, explain what I saw in probably almost no time uh, in terms of the big picture. The, coming back and trying to say, well, now, if, you can, if you can summarize it, what would you say was that? It's all it? one. We're all one. You're one with it. Uh, you're it, basically, imagining that you're not it. It's one with, with it as One it. with all. One with God. One with reality. One with tr truth. They're all different names for uh, uh, ultimate reality with a capital R would, would be one way of saying it. In the East, they would say what's real is that which never changes. And how did this, how did this tie it back to your times in the Air Force? How, how did this relate to, did this motivate you to keep going while you were in the Air Force? Or um, Basically, when I, I was a pilot, as I mentioned earlier, and with, when you fly, you have a lot of time off, actually less time in the Air Force because you have ground jobs and so forth. Uh, but you spend a lot of time on the road, a lot of time in hotels, killing time with nothing to do. And I continued my studies out there and did my writing and so forth. When I, after I had the epiphany, there was a lot of automatic creative flow, I guess is the way you'd say it. And, uh, and I sort see of, that you have one of those creative flows here. Yeah, that, it for us. that was one of them. I, I can can sort I show it to the audience yeah, so sure. that they can see mm -hmm. this lovely creation here that he wrote? And it's called An Unsung Hero. So, yeah, this is such a beautiful thing. Um, We'll try to post it up so you guys can read this. Um, can you tell us more about this and what inspired this in the story um, I was um, writing meta what I call metaphysical triumph poetry, abstract drawings, uh, met uh, metaphors and those things, but I also did rhyme poetry and they know I did that. And one of the sergeants, uh, two of the sergeants in the squadron actually asked me if I could write a, a poem for the ladies because when a couple left, they gave the lady a rose and they gave the, the uh, man a, uh, or the, uh, the military member a uh, poem called The Last Salute. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I'll give it, a, give it a try. So it was sort of written in the context of um, absent spouses because you're gone a fair amount of time in the military. So it was, it's called, I call it the wives poem, basically. Uh, uh, at one time, it was also given to uh, members, uh, people that were flying in United and so forth. So it's sort of universal as how guys feel but don't say. And you said that somebody that you gave it to winded up giving it to other people and other people, and now this is all over the world probably. Well, it has a life of its own. I, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, uh, and I think about 1993, after Desert Storm had kicked off uh, from Iraq, a uh, 747 uh, Pan Am captain had come back with about 300 military guys bringing them home. And he saw that and asked me uh, if I had written it. And I said, yes, I had written it. And he said, it's at home on my refrigerator because the <laughs> Arkansas Air, Air National Guard had given it to all their wives two years wow. earlier. And it's been in a few publications, and, and I've been surprised. I've walked into offices, and it's up on the wall. So it's. Can you imagine? You go into a friend's house, and it's right there. Like yeah, it's it's. Um, an unsung hero, and that's what you are. And you wrote a poem. Well, it was for for my wife, for her, uh, you know, putting up with a lot of the nonsense that they <laughs> have to put up with. The uh, the creative stuff, you you don't. Uh, it's like your child. But it isn't, you're not its mother, it's your father, your father, it's, you're a midwife, you bring it forth. But, so it's sort of, sort of like, um, it's like Stanley, if you'll notice with Stanley periodically, he'll, you'll say, oh, you did a great job, and he'll sort of, what do you mean me? I sort of got out of the way and let it come through me, is what it is. So, so it's a funny, it's like, it's like your child, but it, it got a lot bigger than me. So what would you say um, motivated you to keep going in the Air Force? Was writing one of your, your tricks or techniques that kind of kept you going? Um, it's, it was, it, 
serve the intellectual fulfillment, self-actualization side of the equation. Um, with me particularly, and guys in general, I would say, uh, uh, we tend to compartmentalize and live in boxes, and particularly pilots, because when you're flying an airplane, you have to stay focused on this, and if there's a problem with the airplane, that can't be part of can't be part of your mental cross-check. You have to tune it out, you swallow your emotions, and that's why guys that are in wars have uh, PTSD, because they swallowed the emotions, and then it, come, it comes out later. You pay the price at some point in time. But I could pretty much uh, keep the two lives in separate boxes and compartments and so forth. Uh, Can you elaborate on that? What is it that, that you kept separate? You're writing and, and or did you like yeah. kind of have two lives going on? Yes. Uh, well, pilots generally have a lot of time off. What they do with it, uh, in the civilian community, they generally have second jobs or hobbies or play golf. Did you have a second job? Uh, no, this was my... Uh, that was your second job, truth basically. Seeker. <laughs> <laughs> truth seeker would be like... There's a funny story about that because I, uh, I stayed with a lady in New York when I was flying uh, with Pan Am and a little bit of United. Uh, and um, uh, she was a nurse and they have to do what's called grand rounds where they get periodic training. Well, I would, I would be bored and it'd be a Saturday and I'd go with her. And at one point, the uh, head of psychiatry of the Regents Hospital, who was in charge of child suicide, had a uh, uh, movie called Paint the Stars, which I think was about Vincent van Gogh. Mm -hmm. And it indicated that extremely successful people and artists tended to be manic -y is what it was, where they were doing the bipolar mm -hmm. thing that was rather interesting. But I could tell he loved literature because of the, the references to literature, so I gave him my stuff. I call it my stuff, right? Uh -huh. And after reading that, he said something rather, uh, rather interesting. He said, you've been blessed to live the Apollothean life of a pilot and the Dionysian life of a poet, wow. which is pretty much a right brain, left brain. And um, my heart and my head, the right brain's pretty much equivalent to the heart, or uh -huh. feeling, or emotional, plus artistic. I never, I never knew that. And the other side is, tends to be very calculative, so to speak. And I, uh, the flying, there are a lot of skills in the actual flying that are right brain, but the calculation, the analysis, the two plus two is left brain. Uh, and with me, it, um, as I said, pilots can keep it in the box pretty well, so I pretty much led parallel lives and so forth. And the neat part, when I was out on the line, I could do the studying and the writing without my wife wanting me to do something else. <laughs> now, who would you say is your hero? Because you're, you're an ultimate hero here. You're an unsung hero, an American hero. But who would you say is your hero? Oh, I would say some of the spiritual geniuses of our, you know, uh, some, there are several Eastern ones. I have, uh, one of the things I do a lot of my study is cross-correlation where I'll Take a, we'll say this is the truth, and mm -hmm. you take a line, conceptual line or way of looking at it from that perspective or this perspective. Uh, a lot of the Eastern sages I like, of course, Jesus. Uh, I tend to be mis mystically oriented with the Christianity, which is predominantly John and Paul and so forth. So uh, those are your heroes? I would say, I would say those people that uh, were God-realized would be the fancy term. You'll hear in this day and age, you'll hear enlightenment or liberation or illumination that the lights of the world probably would be my heroes, basically. That's wonderful. And uh, I was, I was, I've been blessed to um, read a lot of books and did a lot of correlation, but uh, those would be the people that were my heroes. Now, was there a time where you were feeling unmotivated, and how did you get through that? Uh, the, uh, the writing is my refuge, basically. If I can get into the... If you give me an insight, or I find an insight, or have an insight, I automatically turn it into a haiku at this point in time, which okay. is a... In the pin of a drop. You can just, well, I, it, I've done it for 20 years, so it's wow. like the, it automatically shifts. If you say yeah. something, oh, that's really neat, it's like I'm called to capture this. <laughs> I, I almost look uh, like uh, they're like concepts, freeze-dried uh, freeze concept that you can turn into a seed with a 575 Preverse is what it is, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can get into a writing mode, I get into the flow, the joy, and the, there's a joy associated with a creative flow. So uh, I can still get wrapped around the axle in my head, basically. But uh, uh, as far as the writing goes, um, when I did a lot of the flow of consciousness uh, writing, uh, 
at some point it would jump the track. Because what do you I mean by jump, jump flow the track? of consciousness is like if you take an essay exam in school where you've loaded the data bank and basically it's they ask a question, you don't have time to think about it, it just flows. Okay. Uh, and as a result of that, it's like you, you're, I'm, I'm almost watching it. It is an automatic writing. It's me doing it. Same guy did the essay exams, but I'm sort of watching it. And when I'm watching it, if you, if you say, oh, that's really neat, now all of a sudden it goes away because you've fragmented. It's, it's a unitary process. You've just stepped out of it, and it goes away. And this is all the stuff that you write about, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the initial response is you try to remember you try to remember where it, uh, where it went. Where was I? It just goes further away. And I, it wasn't a voice or anything, but the intuition that I got was basically uh, be still, take your attention on your heart, and listen. Well, thank you, Richard, for sharing that. Yeah. Coming up, we'll find out what makes Richard Hay an unsung hero. Hey guys, this is Chrissy Morales here, the producer and host of Unsung Heroes, and I'm looking for someone like you to be on my show. If you think you have what it takes to be an unsung hero, email me at tvunsungheroes at gmail.com. Here we are again with Unsung Heroes. I'm Chrissy Morales, and I'm here with the lovely Richard Hay. <laughs> so Richard, you have so many things that you've experienced but what would you think qualifies you as an unsung hero? Well, I don't really look at myself as a, a hero. That's for other people to decide. Uh, I watched Sully last uh, night with my wife, the, air, air, the, the airplane story yeah. with the miracle and so forth. And uh, pilots generally say I, I did my job. And in, in Vietnam, I felt that was my duty and I, I did my job. Uh, circumstances could put you in a position to be a hero or what we would say a goat and mm. I've experienced both of those in mm -hmm. my career just to keep you honest as much as anything else but uh, I think uh, the guys that uh, all, of, all of the guys are hero for uh, putting themselves in the harm's way for uh, uh, service for their country basically uh, regardless of the circumstances uh, just to do that in the first place is uh, is honorable, I guess, and noble. That's right. And I heard that you have a blog, you said, right? Uh, yes. I, um, if, 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 as I mentioned earlier, earlier is a lot of creative uh, writing, abstract drawings, rhyme poetry, metaphysical metaphors, and finally haiku. Uh, and I was called to, um, I retired from United Airlines in 2004 on a medical and uh, was called to it was almost like, get it out there so somebody can stumble over it. Now, I have a marketing degree, but I didn't feel inclined to actually market it. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a labor of love. Uh, but ultimately, um, the book sort of wrote itself. All of that 40 years' worth of those things. Um, and where, where can, what is the title of your blog, and where can they find you? Okay, the, uh, the, the blog is uh, Hey Coup of the Day, basically. Um, hey Coup is a play on words. Uh, somebody, one of my friends said you ought to call it, instead of haiku, Hey, hey Coup with a hyphen. Mm -hmm. And generally I'll have an insight, it might be written, might be something I wrote before, that I'll either write a haiku for, or I have a haiku, and I'll find stuff that fits that. I did gather for years, which no longer is pretty much defunct at this point in time, but I'm, I'm on uh, RFHAY 333 at uh, blogspot.com. Okay. Uh, anybody Folks out there, you guys can take a look at, it, at that lovely blog that I'm sure is very insightful. Um, yeah, it's metaphysically inclined, I guess, or spiritually inclined, you might say, uh, in terms of who am I, what's it all about. I also use the RFHAY 333 as the... Uh, YouTube channel. If you put uh, RFHAY333 in YouTube channel, there's a, uh, probably a hundred things in there. Um, and um, well, those, those are the three things. My, if somebody wants to talk to me about any of this stuff, uh, uh, they can get a hold of me at RFHAY333gmail.com. Uh, and I wanted to say one thing. We have we, we've just experienced so much with you, and, and you know, the, he, we've interviewed him a couple times. So it is my honor to give you the Unsung Heroes Award. <laughs> well, that's very nice. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Thank it's you. been such a pleasure to have you on our show today, Richard. That's Thank great. you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure to speak to you and just pick your brain about little things here and there. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. This is Chrissy Morales with Unsung Heroes. Until next time. Would you like to take some selfies with me? Sure. Okay. <laughs>